All right, we've been working through an example for the last couple of videos of how to do a bank reconciliation. We've learned that we list uh, the bank's opinion of our cash balance, and then we describe why the bank's wrong. What are the things the bank's missing? And the answer is they're missing outstanding checks, and they're missing any deposits that we may have in transit, any deposits that are on the way to the bank. Then we said, okay, what about us? You know, here's our record for cash, and we've listed all the reasons we might be wrong, all the things we might have missed in our cash account. So we looked at our bank statement and said, here's the things that I haven't recorded in my cash T account or in my uh, journal entries. Now, we got through it, and at the end of the day, we were able to explain the differences on each side, and that's a crucial step for every account. And they need to explain the differences between what's on the bank statement and what's on the books. That's what the bank reconciliation is all about. But we said, this right-hand side of the bank statement, this side over here on the right-hand side of the red line, everything over there is stuff that we're missing from our books. There's stuff that we messed up. And so at the very end of the last video, I said, one, two, three, four, five things that we've missed. And that's why we're off. We sh we're at 5269, but we're saying we should be at 5800. Well, these five items, we need to record journal entries to correct them. So that's going to be the next stage of the game. We're going to need to record five journal entries for those five items that are a little bit messed up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a new Word document and let me just uh, pull it over to the side and let me pull this one over to the side and I'm going to show you just how easy these journal entries are. I want to start my journal entries without even really looking at any of the words. I just want to look at the numbers. So one thing I want you to know is journal entries related to a uh, bank reconciliation all involve the same account. And if you guess that that account was cash, you're right. Because, of course, any uh, bank rec related to, uh, any journal entry, rather, related to a bank rec is going to involve cash. The bank reconciliation is all about cash. So let's look at journal entry number one. And again, these will all be dated the, the date of the uh, bank rec, March 31st. Uh, and I'll just put a little one there. Uh, so journal entry one. We said cash has got to go down by 750. I don't care what it's for. I know it's the NSF check because I remember and I'm really smart, but I don't care what it's for. At this point, I just want to know that cash is going down by 750 bucks. So let's credit cash by 750 bucks. And I'll just note that this is my column for credit. And this is my column for debits. By the way, no title necessary here for our journal entries. Uh, just debits and credits. So journal entry 2 also dated March 31st. Uh, let's see, my cash is going up by 1450. Let's debit cash. Again, I'll just note that this is journal entry 2. I'm going to debit cash 1450. Uh, you may be saying, just why am I not doing complete journal entries? No, no, no. I want you to save the journal entries for the end. I just want to prove these are the easiest journal entries ever. Uh, journal entry number three, also on March 31st. I'll leave room for the rest of journal entry two, I hope. Journal entry three, uh, my cash is going down by 30 bucks. Let's credit cash by 30 bucks. So I credit cash 30 bucks. Journal entry four, looks like cash is going up by five bucks. So journal entry four, March. 31st, it's journal entry 4. Let's debit cash by 5 bucks because cash is going up by 5 bucks. Journal entry 5, this is the last one we're going to have to worry about, also dated March 31st. We're going to uh, do journal entry 5. It says cash is going down by 144. Credit cash 144. So let me uh, maximize this and zoom out a little bit. Now we've got a page with five kind of like half journal entries, right? Five journal entries that are halfway done. But here's why I like to do it this way. I've done half of the journal entries, I'm halfway home, and I haven't used a single brain cell yet, right? I've done my uh, bank rec, which absolutely took some, some thinking and some brain power. But when I start these journal entries, I just said, oh, cash is going down, credit cash, cash is going up, debit cash. We know that Assets going down, take a uh, credit. Assets going up, take a debit. So we've done our debits and credits to cash. We're halfway done the journal entry. 
without even thinking about it. We're halfway done all five journal entries, pardon me, without even thinking about it. So from here, it becomes a much easier process. Let's look at journal entry one, and this time we're going to have to look at the whole thing. Oops, wrong way. There it is. Maximize that one. And let's zoom out. Okay, there we go. So journal entry one was related to this NSF check from B. Smith. What we've got to say to ourselves with this M NSF check is, what would you do? It's like that show. What would you do? So if you're placed in this situation, what would you do? You look at your bank statement. You get this uh, note on the bank statement that says, NSF check B. Smith. I'll tell you what I'd do. I would pick up the phone. I would call B. Smith. And I would say, B. Smith, you've given me an NSF check. That means you gave me a check. You didn't have the money to back it up. Your check bounced, B. Smith. B. Smith, you owe me $750. You thought you paid the bill. You owe me $750. When I have a customer who owes me money as a result of normal business, that represents an account receivable to my company. So what I'm going to say to B. Smith is, you owe me $750. Your account receivable for $750 is being reinstated. Debit accounts receivable $750. So journal entry one, we've already got the second half, credit cash. The first half, debit AR, and we'll just note it's B. Smith, $750. Okay, the next entry, part two. Part two or entry two says bank collection 1450. And I remember this one had an asterisk. I got to go back to the original problem and read the asterisk. It says the bank collection on March 23rd was the collection of a note receivable from K. Murphy and represents principal of 1400 and interest of 50 bucks. Okay, so we got 1450 bucks. 1400 was principal on a note receivable. 50 bucks was interest. Let's worry about the 50 bucks first. When I collect $50 of interest, that's money coming into me, that's earnings to me, that's interest revenue. So I'm going to credit, and of course, whenever we have revenues, they take a credit. I'm going to credit interest rev, I'll say that short for interest revenue, for 50 bucks. Now we're missing a credit for 1400 bucks, and that's of course for the principal. And it says in the question that that's principal on a note receivable. It was a collection of a note receivable. So when I collect money on a receivable, if I collect money on an account receivable, I go debit cash, credit accounts receivable to say, oh, they don't owe me any money any money anymore. Their account receivable goes down. Well, if I collect a note receivable, they don't owe me that note receivable anymore. A note receivable is a current asset, typically a current asset, just like an account receivable, only it bears a little bit of interest. So, uh, our note receivable's got to go down by $1,400. We're going to credit notes receivable. Again, if these journal entries are confusing at all, I would strongly recommend you view my earlier videos on basic journal entries. These are not complex. These are not adjusting journal entries. These are recording transactions, basic journal entries. Okay, let's carry on to part three or, or number three here. Service charge, 30 bucks. Okay, well, what is a service charge? A service charge is a cost of having a bank account. It's an expense of the company. Uh, whenever we have service charges, or whenever we have expenses, rather, I'm thinking debit. Debit the expense. Expenses always take a debit. So let's debit service charge expense. And sure enough, that's what I was missing was a debit. So I'm going to debit service charge expense for 30 bucks. All right, on to number four. Number four, I remember, I don't need to flip back. This is that interest revenue. Well, I debited cash, I got a credit interest revenue for five bucks. So that was an easy one, and you can see uh, looking back to that other document, I even called it interest revenue. If expenses take a debit, revenues take a credit, so we credit interest revenue. The last one, perhaps the trickiest, is that darn bookkeeper's there for 144 bucks. And we said, well, as a result of it, we should have credited cash by 144 bucks. Uh, looking at the problem, it was this difference. We did credit cash at 839. We should have credited cash 983. The difference was 144. I didn't credit cash enough. 
But now we got to say, well, what was the other side of that transaction, right? What do I need to debit to fix that? I fixed cash, but I've obviously got to fix something else. If I didn't deal with cash properly, I didn't deal with some other account properly as well. I, I messed up another account. So let's read the the notes here. Check 64. A payment on account was incorrectly recorded as 839 on Ned's books. The rec correct amount of the check uh, was recorded by the bank 983. Now I kind of glossed over this uh, the first couple of times we've looked at it, but I just want to note it now. This phrase, a payment on account. So we went credit cash and it was for a payment on account. Aha! A payment on account means we were, if we receive it, it means somebody else is paying us on account, but this was us paying somebody on account. If I pay somebody on account, it's because I'm paying down my account payable. So I went debit accounts payable, credit cash 839. I should have gone debit accounts payable, credit cash 983. So not only is my cash messed up, my accounts payable was messed up by 144. So I've got to change my accounts payable by 144. I'm going to debit accounts payable by 144. Debit AP 144. And again, the reason I do this entry comes right to this highlighted point. It's a payment on account. So I messed up the credit side of the payment on account. I didn't credit cash properly. I also, therefore, have messed up the debit side of the payment on account. And I've got to fix it as well. So that's a little bit tricky, but at the end of this, I hope you have a clear understanding of bank reconciliations. Flipping back to our bank rec, we've said we've got a good title there. I didn't put the dollar signs. Maybe I should now just to kind of clean it up. Dollar signs at the top and bottom of each column. So top line and bottom line there. And I think I've got a reasonably good bank rec, I mean, given my bad handwriting. Um, but on the left side, we said, here's what the bank thinks our cash is, and here's why the bank's wrong, and here's all the things the bank's missing. And it's going to be missing outstanding checks and outstanding deposits, or deposits in transit. On the right-hand side of our bank rec, we say, here's what we thought our cash was, according to our T account, according to our records, 5269, and here's all the reasons we're wrong. Now, it's fine for the bank to be wrong as long as we know the bank's going to catch up, and the bank will catch up when the check's clear and when the deposit goes into the bank account. However, it's not okay for us to be wrong. So those five items that we missed, we have to fix it. And how does an accountant fix anything? An accountant fixes stuff with journal entries. And so for each of those five items, I've prepared proper journal entries, and I've got a good bank reconciliation. I've done the bank rec. I've done the journal entries. I'm feeling good about things. That's all for this topic. Uh, but stay tuned for our next topic, which uh, I think will be inventory. No, maybe accounts receivable. Anyway, that's all for this one.